But you don't necessarily have to because the threat of the Sejuani playing around top hey. is there. And yeah, this is the hype moment because you know this is a strong 2v2 for Gumakaria. It's buffed on this patch, the Q build that was being mentioned by Chronicler earlier. Faker back on the Migragas. Let's see how it all goes down as we hop on the rip for game number one. And apparently Faker's, you know, like he's back here on the Gragas. Now enough about this. Let's see this gank from Young Jay. Zeus does read it early, but is gonna have to flash away. Still a bit of damage in due to not really in flash range himself as the Q just going to, you know. Uh, the Gragas is because there is some pressure here for Young Jay on this Sejuani, you know, with the Renekton top, but See if they actually are going to pull oh, this off. They have no idea. Zeus, no flash, going to knock the Renekton away, but Dudu has flash. Zeus is just dead. No way for him to get out. And they totally get around T1's vision. A very nice play as Ingo's owner going to miss the Q as now he's got a flash away. As down in the bottom lane, I guess Dune might just die here as the Gravitum hits. And now Tayon is trying to trade it back. Area trying to get in front of these Qs, and the play is there! Double kill for Guma in the bottom lane. Incredible play from Karia there. Doesn't even need to flash for it. Positioning so good. You still push the, the Jace away. But as soon as this happens topside, this is when Karia presses Q and goes in, right? Because he knows that Sejuani's not coming back top. They actually have so much power here with this Ignite. And if you get the hook off, you're going to be able to make this work. And then Karia trades places here with Guma to block those Qs, as you pointed out. Two kills for the Aphelios. He's already built. Yeah. Also, at the same time, Karia's kind of been on the roam. So uh, a very annoying lane state here on the bottom side for the Kwangdong one. As he's going to hit another hook within the minions. Does not matter. Dune, he has no flash, actually. He was about two seconds away. And even if he did flash, I'm not even sure. That's a third kill here for Guma as not going to hit this hook, but he's got a Lee Sin, who's got a kick. So that is an easy one, owner. He says, I'll take this one this time. As meanwhile, Crescendo in the bottom side, Wolf. Yeah, this, where have we seen this before? Yeah. That he's going to hook the Zeri and then goes for the Lulu through the minion wave is so crazy. We'll watch it in the replay in a moment as we're not done up Oh, he doesn't have his... Okay, he's actually going to go in on to owner here. That's a lot of damage with the ult as well. Owner just going to flash away. Q dodged by Young Jay's flash as the damage coming out from Zeus is a huge amount. Flash in, gets the last auto. And now Dudu here with flash of his own and a couple of dashes. He should be okay. Guma has blood there, sir. Watch this angle from Karia, man. Okay, okay, Look okay. at the positioning that the Zeri runs down because Zeri doesn't have minions to defend her. So she actually kites back and then he goes in for the hook between the minions. Then sets up this lantern, by the way, for owner to come in here even faster. Pushes him away from the turret and the kick is clean. Tons of damage coming out. Nice dodge on the shot blasts. Here comes Young Jay. Dudu, no Dominus, but he does have Flash. Throws a straight in Azeus, who does not have Flash of his own. Dudu just playing it safe, waiting for the stun angle, as here's Tayun comes in, picks up a kill, gets double buff. The Shield Bow is not even a spike for him either. You know, I mean, when he gets the Shield Bow, he's going to be like, well, I don't die as easily. Okay. okay. Well, there's no cast, but does not matter, as Bulldog does not have Flash, so Faker easily able to set that one up, and owner will collect. Dodge the last body slam, not gonna dodge this one. And Lee Sin has great gank assist with that. If you can hit it, you just guaranteed Sonic Wave. Usually a tragedy. Oh, well, Faker's got a flash this time and Bulldog does not. So he's just gonna sit here outside of the gravity field and that will be the end of the victor again. As an exasperated look on Bulldog's face. We really do. Um, so definitely join us there. Because we'll watch this play. Yep. He has flash and Bulldog doesn't, so even Bulldog knows, right? He's just running away, but you can't get away. Awesome. That's not gonna happen. Got him. Oh, yeah. Two C's. Two C's. Uh, this is already dead. As the hook comes in and Young Jay just can't get in either. As Wild Growth, that is a big piggy, but is it going to matter? As T1 kind of just smacking them with their wallets right now. Tayun casked in, is going to have to flash away. As down goes the Lulu and the chase continues. Bulldog nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And guys, I think this might just be the end of the game. T1's so. just gonna take Baron, ace them, and push mid and end it. And I don't think you can team fight this this way, where you split like this as T1 if Zeri has items, but we're 21 minutes into the game. She doesn't have items, she doesn't have power, and you can win both sides of this fight. You force the wild growth to be used not on the Renekton, but onto the Sejuani with a pick that prevents a 50-50 split.
off the Baron. And I mean, I don't know if there was a, a better way to play this wow. by T1. I don't know if there was. <laughs> okay, well, that was a game of League of Legends. That just happened 21 and a half minutes. T1 just bopped him on the head. With and it's like, how do you how do you just get snowballed by an Aphelios who starts call? Oh. It just means we're going to see a Callista lane instead. Okay. Well, yep. it is going to be Lethality. <laughs> it is going to be Hail of Blades. It is going to be an absolute kill lane mm -hmm. here for T1 with a level 3 gank timing for owner. Riot has taken some steps to try to pull off. I mean, there is an incredible amount of CC on the side of Kwangdong, and Kasante is pretty much a free lane as we hop into the rip for game two. And okay, Young Jay down on the bottom side. They know that Elise is not here, but again, it's pretty early on. Let's see if they do go for this as Owner is pathing down bottom side. And he didn't use his flash to trade a flash with Bulldog, so he still has a long range he can engage from. Teleport comes in, Young Jay, even with the flash out of Kuma. It's going to be traded down as Karia is going to pick up the kill. And Faker will be able to get a flash out of both of them. Bulldog and they can't get the stick straight. around. Yeah, T1 can't actually grab that early. Baker. All right. <laughs> 3v3, actually. Yeah, actually 3v3, the tri-lane. Yeah. Real 3v3. Um, that's nice a ton strong. of damage onto Young Jay, though. I don't yeah. think he could stay around much longer. He has a giant spell, which is a ton of health, but you know, still got to be careful. Don't have many resistances at this point. Okay, we see Owner is wrapping around here, trying to maybe go catch this Maokai and punish him. And get On vision. vision. Yeah, he's seen, so this isn't going to work out too well. Oh, but no flashes in the bottom side. They pushed up very far, and Juice is going to go down. As now Owner coming in here. Again, no flash for Taeyun. If he hits the cocoon, he's probably dead. Flash cocoon to make 100% sure. And that is a double kill now for Guma Yusu. Well, Guma's got two kills now. I mean, it started off a little bit shaky, but now you, you end up getting these kills over, off of an overextension from the bottom duo who have no flashes. Jin Maokai is going to press that as Owner is here. Gonna look to try to turn this one around. The teens do come in as the cocoon is in onto Young Jay before he can get underground. Oh, that is so unfortunate for him, but that's gonna be a double kill now to the side of Guma again. As you mentioned around the Baron pit, around the Rift Trail pit, look at the bottom side of the map too. I mean, as Flash comes in here, Bulldog, he is gonna oh. get cast out of midair. Oh. Down he goes to smack down to real life. <laughs> oh no. Oh, a Fade's call to get him out of dodge. Oh, they're just getting plates everywhere. And well, I was hoping for a game of League of Legends here in game two. I mean, this is a recorded game of the <laughs> LCK. Still counts? Still counts. Uh, oh, no. Chain. Oh, Tayun's going to get chained up, and they have the vision. He has no now flash. June is being run down here. We're actually moving in under the turret to maybe get in there. Zeus in the 1v1. We haven't even really looked at the top lane, like, forgot these guys existed. As the grand challenge is in, the vital is on the side of Zeus, as just a little bit too tanky is Dudu, but Zeus can kite this one out. Yeah, he blocks the Q3. Mm. I don't think he wants to go any harder in on this. The vital went north, so. Yeah. Well, we, we were reminded that the top lane exists. Yep, and the mythic advantage that Dudu had it's no longer an advantage as now the Sunder is picked up as Guma. All right, well, it's going to flash on in. This should be a good Guma, or, or dead Guma, rather, I should say. <laughs> a good engage this time from Kwokdong. I mean, he is a good Guma. He's he is a, he's a good, yeah. He's a good Guma. He's a good Not Guma, a but at the end of the day, he is dead. Look at this timing of the cast. I he thought, it. he's like, no, if you're a Bulldog, you're like... Because you might as well use it, right? Like, if he doesn't propose. He's doing, yeah. yeah. Okay, just gonna all out onto Zeus here as Grand Challenge is here. End of Maokai. Does Zeus really care? One more hit on the vital, bottom vital, vital could do it, but he's just running away as a dodge comes in, but the damage should be enough for Kwangdong. As Dudu and Young Jay do get the job oh, done. His owner's here Another again. Cask? Another cask? Okay, that's a root here on Takaria. Camp Fates call himself as uh, he does not have flash, but he's just gonna hop away as Tayan will fourth shot him in the face. Smite down on Tatane, but owner rushing you inside. It's like you lose this game, and oh, the longer you man. wait, the damage comes through. 
So you have to you have to hard engage. You have to look for that arrow, June. Where is it going to be? Who are you going to hit? Well, he doesn't have too many choices here. Fate's call available. Yeah, it's just everything is thrown into Fate's call, and yeah, it's got a lower cooldown. But for this fight right now, T1 are in a great spot. Is the arrow damage way too much? KTP though coming down here. Nowhere to run. Oh, no, <laughs> he's like, come on, this is unfair. Just gonna get body slammed. As Faker finds the flank teleport ward, and Young Day just disappears. Again, he's not very tanky, so. Yeah, T1 just way too far ahead. That's going to be the end of them and maybe the end of the game as they're... They have any vision, so Bulldog is like, maybe I can kill this turret on my way out. It's going to be awkward. Nice dodge. He wins this now, maybe. All right, all in. No cask for Faker. He's got Body Slam, though, and the barrel on the ground misses as Seraphs is already done. What? <laughs> yeah. What are we... Oh, oh, man. And he can't Baron actually gone. kill him. He can't actually kill him. No, Faker's going to kill him. There's no flash. Because in an extended fight. Yeah. Well, if you, t <laughs> if you jump on the body slam. <laughs> hey, oh. the arrow into Cassante. Nice. Got him. <laughs> you did it. And this TP is, is insult to injury. All right. Well, they found Donor. Area also nice. flashes. <laughs> so some, some nice big grabs here. But it's too late. Baron's already taken. You know, the Drake is already gone. You basically have to find either Owner or Caria. Those would be your best options in terms of uh, engaged targets, as there is the Maokai ultimate. Just going to line up for this one as a bunch of damage is coming in. Azaeus, by the way, is behind enemy lines, has found Taeyun, and it took a while for them to even notice as he is getting CC'd up, as the two top laners will be traded here, but also Caria will go down. Wang Dong are kiting this out. Front to back fight here potentially if they could stay out of Faker's range. He has flash. Oh, he messes it up. It's not. Oh, oh. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guma's just incredibly fed at this point. And uh, looks like he hasn't even Prowler's Clawed yet. Just going to hit that one as well. Double kill comes in. And they win the fight. Wasn't as clean. He didn't zig or zag there. Yeah. Uh, so Rod of Ages will get to finish this time as we crest the 25 minute mark. and. Baker hits level 16, Taeyun, run! Uh, well. <laughs> wait. Okay, that was Faker at... Okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. But either way, not going to be too impactful in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes because... it's better not to know. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Maokai is dead. Uh, look at the damage again. Like, he did actually build a tank item, but... <laughs> yeah. Taeyun's just coming in off the TP, Taeyun. No chance for him. As June also. Just gonna throw in Guma just to get him another kill. He's now 10 and 2. As they're just running him around the map. Again, bopping him with their little uh, plastic red hammer, basically. <laughs> As that's gonna be the Baron to the side of T1. This should eventually be a kill. Just pan away like they do in the movies, please. <laughs> pan away to the plus 300s from the Baron, you know? Okay, there we go. Yeah, see, he, he gets away. He's going all out. T1 have sent members over here to catch the <laughs> catch Bulldog. They're not being very nice to him as he blast plants straight into the arms of Faker, who will take it down. It is a 3v4 here on the push, but it's Baron and it's massive wall. It's June is dead as they'll give that kill over to Owner. It looks like this game, guys, should be over from here as the Baron buff, they still have two and a half minutes on with the curtain call, not going to do anything. No, no fates call at this point in time. Faker is being pushed under turret, but he has a stopwatch. As that should do it. The turrets are going to be taken out. Young Jay going to put up one last stand alongside of his buddy Dudu. Yep, and that should be the Nexus to fall with it. T1, another dominant 2-0. Yeah, and a lot to see here. Very fun couple of games as owner yeah, they're just going to boost their KDA stats as that will go the Nexus 2-0. to zero. Bro, we um. knew it was going to be in the live the live mic as well, of course, so he's probably feeling a little bit goofy about that. <laughs> yeah. Guma, just uh, nearly 1,000 damage per minute. Didn't quite hit it. Thank you very much, guys. We are here joined by Kumayoshi Keria, the bottom duo of T1 for the PUG interview. Congratulations. You guys picked up your 12th win of the season. How are you feeling, Karia? I thought, you know, KDF does have a great potential, so we worked really hard for this matchup, and it worked really well, so it feels amazing. 
Messi 선수 도 승리 소감 부탁드립니다. What about you, Guman Yusi? It was a very quick, clean win, so it feels amazing. In Korea, we are playing on a new patch, so we were really curious to find out what kind of picks will P1 unleash today. And we had the Felius Thresh bottom deal back to the meta after a very long while. Tell me more about this. Both Aphelius and Thresh got buffed, so we wanted to give it a shot, and it worked really well. And then, you know, usually the champions that were banned in the previous versions were actually, like, got nerfed so bad, so we can actually try new picks. And carry at your Thresh is 24 and 9 so far in the LCK total. It is obviously one of your signature picks as well. Do you think Thresh is very viable in the current meta? I cannot really say we're going to see, see this really often, but yeah, it's going to be pretty viable. And then we had a very early kill secured by Gumayusi Karia bottom deal very early on in game number one. So let's take a look at this replay of the bottom lane double kill. It, the teamwork was just so on point. How are you able to land all of your skill shots? Well, I just, I don't think like I like outplayed this. I mean, I did did a great job, but I think this was more of a mistake on the Kwangdong's bottom duo. Kumayushi, how did you see that angle so early? Well, I mean, this is what we normally do all the time, so it, it just happened, you know? And also, Keria, you know? For you, nowadays, Thresh seems to be a very unique pick because you've been playing a lot of, you know, unconventional support picks. Well, to be honest, every time I play Thresh in Screams, I always, like, play so bad. But when I get to play it on stage, I get to play better. So I feel I'm, I'm so lucky. And Keria, you picked up another POG with the Thresh performance. How many POG points are you looking to get? I don't care how many points, I just want to be the POG leader in the end. Owner is on the chase right now, so looking forward to seeing more and more competition in the POG standings as well. And Kuma, you see, we had the shortest game of the season in game number one. When you guys have such a stomp, what kind of feedback do you guys have? You know, when you have such a you know clean and fast win. We didn't really have much to talk about regarding the bottom lane, but I think they did have some feedback around the top side. And then, you guys actually let Varus Ash through, kind of letting Kwangdong Freaks to pick either of them. I guess you guys are pretty confident playing up against either of those two picks. Yeah, I mean, looking at the draft, you know, sometimes you have to play against those two strong picks. So when you have to do it, we're gonna just go, we're just gonna do it, you know. We don't wanna avoid it. We're just gonna go in for that and do our best. And Kuma Yushi, on the Korean side of the production, you were the best ceremony player of last week doing the TikTok trend. How do you feel about that? I really like this new culture we're having at the LCK, you know, last year it was maybe just me and Pusik doing a lot of ceremonies, but these days I can see a lot of players are having fun on stage, so I really like it and I'm so honored to be the best ceremony player of the week last, last week. Kumayusi, is there anything else you're preparing for your ceremony? No, I always go with my the spur of the moment ideas, so nothing is in my mind yet. And T1 right now is on an 8 match winning streak, and your next opponent is Brion. How are you feeling about that matchup? We will do our best in the Brion series as well in order to continue our winning streak. And Kuma? So I think round two is about to wrap up as well. So time flies. I hope we can end the second round on a very good note. And this will be the end of the interview from Kumayoshi Keria, the bottom duo of T1. And I'm going to pass it back to Atlas and Chronicler. Thank you.